this off season we did kind of what we normally do i guess we have a bit of a break kind of let the body recover and then we start to tick over with our training There's a little road put in there, and then this is the other bit. This is the really hard hill at the end, okay. and then that's here. Excellent. But we'll probably see you on the second. Okay. We are going to escape the Bodmin Jail and run all the way to Padstow, which is about a half marathon. And we're going to get pasties in Padstow, so it's all for the pasties, really. We'll meet you there. <laughs> you ready? Yep. Let's go. We actually had about two weeks down in Cornwall where we went and did some park run tourism. We went to the Eden Project Park Run, which was really, really cool. Great sightseeing um, and just generally nice 5k. We also managed to get about a half marathon in along the Camel Trail in Cornwall, which was really nice. We got dropped off the Bodmin and did a point to point run to Padstow. Uh, I also got a sea swim in, which was absolutely freezing. Would definitely recommend. Um, probably getting a thermal wetsuit if you're going to do that because that was freezing. Um, other than that, we just ticked over at home. We did a lot of strength and conditioning training. We're lucky enough to go to David Lloyd. We've got a great pain cave at home. So we continue to try and get strong during that time as well, but just generally ticking over. And if we wanted to have a rest, we would definitely have a rest. Oh, and also we did the 100 100s. Oh uh, yeah, so we suggested that we should do a challenge just before Christmas and we had about eight of us um, and maybe some other people that dropped in that we kind of said hello to but we were busy swimming along. It's mostly Percy pigs, some Red Bull, some water and some chlorine. <laughs> Start at the 10 past six. Ready? 10 past six. <laughs> Gotta get the sugars in early. A bit long guy. <laughs> That'd be really annoying if I did that the whole way. <laughs> 30 
you done? Take in. Forty. Halfway. Woo! Halfway. In the same way that Christmas Eve is all day. Yes, all day, isn't it? Yes. No. See, no. we have this debate every year. Look in your calendar. No. Nope. Christmas Eve is the whole day. The whole day, not just the evening. <laughs> What's your view on this? Is Christmas Eve the whole day or just the evening? No, the evening. Christmas Eve. No! Yes! No! No! Yes, no! This debate is ongoing. We've got time to talk about that. I haven't had time to talk about anything. But this morning is not Christmas Eve Eve. Yeah. Tonight is Christmas Eve Eve. No, no, no. Yes. We Alex is there. on team evening. Oh, Christ. What the hell? You guys win shots of gin every lap as well, yeah? Yeah. Two. Two. <laughs> Double. <laughs> I'm starting to lose feeling in my arms. <laughs> They're not really there anymore. How's my stroke looking 9,600 metres in? Absolutely awful. <laughs> <laughs> like my muscles have been ripped from my elbows. <laughs> well, it's not just me. shoulders have got wider maybe. I didn't have time to eat Percy Pig so I had about between 15 and 10 seconds rest to try and eat a Percy Pig, have a bit of conversation, maybe have a drink, a bit of Red Bull and then uh, most of the time I was trying to eat the Percy Pig and swim which I used to be really good at eating and swimming but I've lost that skill now and um, I was just choking on bits of Percy Pig. There's probably loads of bits of Percy Pig in the pool so. <laughs> oh that was tough. But it actually went quite quick. For a 10k, it went quite quick. <laughs> I'm glad we did it though. Yeah. Quite a good challenge. No. What are you going to say though? Christmas Eve Eve. Eve. Today is Christmas Eve Eve. Tonight is Christmas Eve. No, it's not. It's, it's the it whole is. day. No, it's not. Because it's, it's the, the morning. Whole day. How can it be morning and an Eve? Because it's the eve of the day. It doesn't mean. Eve does not mean evening in this case. Yes, it does. No, it, it doesn't. You're yes, wrong, does. you're wrong. I'm wrong then. Well, Twitter, Twitter's going to answer it, so... Okay. And I'll be right. Answer it then. I will be right. The tweet has been sent. So the purpose of off-season is, from a training perspective, is mostly just to allow your body to shed all of that fatigue and um, that has built up throughout the season. It's quite an intensive race season. It starts around, for us, March, April time and it runs all the way through until October. So yeah, there's a lot of residual fatigue in the, in the body and if you don't shed that fatigue somewhere, it will just keep accumulating from one season to the next. So the purpose of off-season is to just let the body fully repair and let the mind mentally repair before you start training again properly uh, come sort of January 1st for us. Training in the off season is more about just doing some of the stuff that you've perhaps wanted to do throughout the season but haven't had much opportunity to do it um, and also about just ticking along, uh, keeping the body moving but the ultimate aim is rest and recovery from a hard season and getting yourself ready to go for proper training which normally for us commences on January 1st. We normally feel quite ready and motivated to get back into hard work after the Christmas break. In fact, we're probably like more along the lines of can't wait to get back into hard work after the Christmas break. Okay, 
Tonight we're here at Ashton Playing Fields for our first track session of the year. It is so cold and I've just done a warm up lap and my eyes were crying from the cold but um, we're going to do some 1k reps. We've got Ronnie O'Sullivan with us for his track session. Um, yeah, it's going to be loads of fun. Yeah. Hopefully we will get some footage of us running around and yeah, let's see how good of a runner Ronnie is. And how slow we are after Christmas. <laughs> difference in training structure is that there's there's not really any structure in off season it's just kind of train as and when you want for as long as you want for as little as you want there's no plan you just go with the flow and then we hit January 1st and we start base phase for what is essentially a 10 month season uh, finishing off in Kona and from January through until probably March, we're doing quite a lot of uh, zone one, two um, base miles, building the foundation for the rest of the season to sit on. We carry over quite a lot of fitness anyway, even though we've had a, a, a relative rest. Um, we raced in Daytona this year, so we're actually quite a lot fitter than we have been in previous years. So we have a tradition on January 1st, we normally start the year with a long run. Um, in the UK we can do a double park run, which is quite rare. Um, you can do one at 9am and one at 10.30, so we normally set the alarm quite early, run over to the first park run and then run to the next one and it ends up being around like 20 miles. Um, this year we had a bit of a cold, so we actually did run to one of the park runs and then ran home which ended up being about 14 miles so it's still quite a good way to start the year but I think we've learned from previous mistakes that if you've got a cold you should probably listen to your body we don't want this cold kind of hanging into the rest of the year so we want to shift it as quickly as possible so yeah we started with a 14 mile run which was really nice um, and then we did a bike session as well and we're basically just going to start getting into that routine now so quite looking forward to really getting going again. So early plans for the year, we will fly off to Lanzarote very soon to do our first warm weather training camp. We have actually done quite well this winter, we've managed to get out and ride a little bit with a group, but we are craving a bit of warmth. So we are going to head out to Club La Santa for about two weeks just to start really getting that base training down. Um, and then we'll head back to the UK for the second phase of our base training before we start racing, which we are going to let you guys know where we're heading very soon. So we are going to make some small adjustments in 2020 with our training schedule. Um, we are going to be a little bit more in routine. Um, we always have been sort of in and out of routine. We have what I would call boxes that need to be ticked each week and we'd make sure each box is ticked no matter what uh, so those would be like key sessions uh, the order in which they get ticked normally comes down to how we feel but now because we've got a few other commitments uh, with the smallest one being the dog keeping ourselves in routine probably helps everyone else around us keep in routine as well so we are going to go back to how we used to train when we were swimmers which was very routine every single session was the same week in week out you knew on a Tuesday night you're going to have a kick workout 
um, and Thursday morning would be like a recovery swim, for example. Um, we both respond really well to that kind of structure and we're quite looking forward to getting back to that as well, to be honest. So what won't we change this year from previous years? Well, we have our key workouts. If they work, we're going to keep them. Um, nutrition wise, we both have a healthy balanced diet. We may introduce some less meat into our diet, so that might actually be a change. Um, but to be honest, everything seems to be working, so we don't need to make massive changes. Unless something jumps out and it starts to not work, we won't be making any big changes. Okay, so a typical week for me, um, generally obviously it's pretty high volume as a long distance athlete. Um, I have a track session every week, that's one of my key sessions. I obviously have a long run every week, um, and I respond pretty well to a hill rep style run session. So they're my main runs. Um, around that, everything else is just steady, easy miles in the forest, on trail, so it's nice and soft um, and keeps kind of the risk of injury quite low. Um, Bike-wise, I do a lot indoors, it will stay indoors, that's where I respond well, on the Wahoo Trainer, on Zwift. Um, I've got kind of some VO2 works, that high intensity, um, and then I've also got some more sweet spot range training. Um, and then along with that I will do at least two long rides a week. When we go away on camp that will go up, um, but at home I will try and get out for two long rides per week. Um, and then swimming wise, we're very fortunate to have an endless pool at home, so the majority of my swims will be in the endless pool. Um, when Reese and I go to a public pool it can be chaos because people don't necessarily like the speeds that we swim at. Um, so when we do go to a public pool, we try and go early in the morning or maybe in the middle of the day. But yeah, we just kind of do our typical swim sets. Actually, when we go away on camp, those swim sets become a bit more regimented and we try and work within each zone. So we'll have speed, we'll have the endurance stuff and we'll have the more VO2 range. So on every discipline, we're trying to work the majority of the energy systems um, whilst making that into quite a big endurance block at this stage in the year. So a typical week volume at this stage of the year, we're doing quite a lot of high volume, lower intensity. So we'll be doing anything from 15 to 20 hours of cycling per week, somewhere in the region of 70 to 100 kilometers of running per week, and somewhere between 15 to 25K of swimming per week. Not always necessarily at the higher end of those ranges all at one time, so it might be like a higher bike week where we do 25 hours of cycling, but much lower swimming. Um, this time of type of year is probably the highest volume that we would do throughout the year. When we get to June, July, it's much, much lower than that, but obviously a lot more intense.